Here is some of this year's Peter King interview with Josh Allen. The topic improving on what was a rough 2022 season for Josh Allen and the Bills. Situational football, just understanding the game a little bit better. You know, that's no secret. I led the league in interceptions last year. So just understanding when and when not to be as aggressive on the football field. I know there's going to be times where they're going to have to be. If you're down two scores late in the game, you got to make something happen. Um, but if it's not, you know, let's let's learn to live to fight another down. And, you know, there's a stat last year. I, don't, I, I forget if we were first, second, or third, but we were very high in, in uh, possessions ending in points. And if you factor that in and take out maybe half the turnovers, you know, it just kind of shows how good we can be. So taking that upon myself, being smarter with the football and uh, trying to let these playmakers make some plays for us. Do you find any commonality when you look back at the end of the year in this offseason in your six red zone interceptions? You've never been a red zone interception guy. Coincidence or was there a problem? Um, I mean, I think there was, you know, a couple bad decisions. Um, there's a couple times that I've, I've gotten away with things in the past when I've, you know, rolled right and thrown back left. And again, just understanding when I, and when I can't do those things and um, maybe one or two tips in there, which are those are going to happen. If, if I can live with the tip picks, I can live with maybe a bad ball here or there. It's, it's really the mental interceptions where it's like, why did I why did I throw this ball? So making sure I'm deep diving back into, you know, the last few years of, of my red zone career and because um, I, I take pride in that. You know, before before this last season, I was really, really good in the red zone. So just trying to find a way to get back to that. And again, being the, the best quarterback that I can be for this team. You know, and that is the key when you have a high degree of physical skills, knowing where the limits of those skills are and yeah. not to push beyond what you're capable of doing. Right. And he can do so much, it's hard to know where that line is. And also, he's a little too hard on himself. He didn't lead the league. And it, right? In interceptions last year, but but he may he may think he did, but he didn't. Another thing too, if he were to golf with Tom Brady right now, Brady could not make the fat jokes that he made last year. Not that they were appropriate or accurate a year ago, but we noticed this, I think, when he was like taking batting practice somewhere. We yeah. saw him somewhere earlier this offseason. Yeah. We're like It's more tone. This guy's this guy's getting the the Superman physique as he gets ready for the 2023 season. Yeah, it definitely looks like he's a little more trim or in shape or muscular or something. There's definitely a different look to him. I agree with you there, right? It's one of the things I love about Josh Allen and and knowing this just being around him a little bit is he's he's in, he's incredibly self-deprecating. That's why like he goes into I led the league in interceptions. He's probably telling himself that. He's pissed at it. You know, it's extremely smart individual, we know that. But, you know, like you said, it's it's a it's a combination of things here. You know, one, there's a lot on him. He is the biggest playmaker. And maybe like we've talked about when I did my quarterback rankings, I don't know if there's any team in football that's more dependent on their quarterback making outstanding plays than the Buffalo Bills and what they expect from Josh Allen. And, you know, to what you said too, Mike, you know, like when you have that type of talent, it, it's you can lose control a little bit. We saw two years ago, the year the Chiefs lost to the, the, the Cincinnati Bengals and the and AFC champion. Mahomes, he kind of went through that struggle there early in the year when they were, what, three and three at one point and all that. He was making some dumb decisions, and you were going, what What are you doing? Why would you throw that? When you're so great and you can do such extraordinary things, you kind of always expect to, and he's got to just dial it back and reel it in a little bit there. Yeah, some mistakes are going to happen, but he had some ones yet last year where you went, wait, we, we hadn't seen you you do this until since rookie year that was rookie year Josh Allen and uh, I know that's bothered him and I'm, I'm sure he'll get them fixed what do you think of and I'm going to throw a curveball at you here. yeah I saw this over the weekend Ben Volan of the Boston Globe had the story Sean McDermott the Bills coach has put up at the team's indoor practice facility a giant banner of a Lombardi trophy between one of the goalposts so they can see all year long what their goal is. They don't own a Lombardi trophy. They haven't been to a Super Bowl in 30 years. Last year, they were the Super Bowl favorite as the season began. I thought it was too much pressure to put on any team that hasn't been to a Super Bowl in 29 years at the time. What do you think of that Lombardi trophy being there all the time as a reminder of the Bills as to what it is they're trying to accomplish? I, you know, I, I like it. I got no problem with that. You know, every team's got to find their – their mantra, their saying, whatever they're going to get, get you know, get them motivated for the year. The Bills, like you, you've discussed a lot this off season. You know, that's that's really all they want. They need to knock down the door and get to that game right there. 
You know, and, and last year, Mike, I could speak to it. And, and I think you'll remember being up there at training camp, you know, when they were preparing to play the Rams and there, you know, they were embracing the Super Bowl conversation. You know, there was an energy and a feel up there where I went, ooh, they, they're, they, they want this. They're ready to go. I mean, it was palpable. You could feel it on the practice field, right? Now, it didn't happen, and it was a tough year. I think we would both agree that I don't know if there's a team here in recent history that had to deal with more off-the-field, curveball circumstances than the Buffalo Bills last year, and I think it ultimately wore them out. You know, But, then there's still a lot of good there. And I like this as a little, you know, the old hot poker to remind everybody. Those are the kind of things, Mike, you know, whether it's a cool saying, a picture, whatever, that gets guys to stay on the field for a few minutes after practice. And let me do that. Damn, there's that Super Bowl, whatever. And it just always stays in your brain, and that's why I like it. Or maybe speaks to the better angels of some players who might be inclined to get frustrated, might be inclined to gesticulate ah, on the ah, sideline if the yeah. game isn't going the way they like, to hold him in place. Here's what we're trying to do. Let's hold it together. There's going to be ups and downs and highs and lows. There's going to be frustrations. There's going to be moments where we want to allow our emotions to get the better of us. We have to forget about that and look what's between those goalposts. That's what we have to focus on. So I think he wants It'll to do burn that it too, into their sure. brains. Yeah. And, and, and the first thing I thought is this is the way to try to get the whole Stefan Diggs stuff behind them. And Diggs was great last week when he met with the media. But it doesn't change the fact that what happened happened and all the cryptic tweets and everything that went down and we saw what occurred in the playoff game. I think that they know that there's going to be those moments and they need to try to just keep everybody focused on what they're trying to do. And we'll see if it works. Their team is good enough to do it. The problem is there's, you know, five or six other teams good enough to do it as well just in their conference. Right. And there's two or three others in the other conference that are good enough to do it too. I mean, it's going to be a hell of a ride. I mean, I we still have a few weeks to go until we make our predictions, and the Bills will be in the mix. But, man, it's whoever wins it this year will have earned it, Chris. Yeah, uh, the, there's no doubt about that. And like we've talked about, I mean, the only team I'm willing to cancel out in the AFC in general is the Houston Texans. I mean, as far as everybody else, I go – they got a chance. I could see, you know, playoffs at least for sure. And then, like you said, there's a handful of teams, maybe more than ever, that you look at and go, ooh, I truly think they have Super Bowl potential. And I don't remember the AFC or the NFC having that many teams uh, that, that you could think of that way going into a season. And by the way, you can see more of Peter King's training camp tour videos at youtube.com slash NFL on NBC Bills Jets Steelers Lions phase one he'll be as I said earlier all over the place as week one approaches hi it's Mike Florio thanks for watching PFT on YouTube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk